Hi, this is Sam from Liberty Sprayers. I'm going to introduce you to our newest type chlorous acid generator. It's a two liter um, and we're going to run a test with it today um, on the video and we'll see how it performs. Now this model is a, this model is a little different. The pitcher, sorry about the noise, but the pitcher does remove from the base so you don't have to have the electronics if you want to fill it up from the water. You don't have to worry about the electronics getting water on it. One thing to keep in mind is that you should still not wash this in a dishwasher because it does have those contacts on the bottom. You want to keep those in good shape, keeping it from getting um, corroded, which could happen if it's in a dishwasher with detergents washing it. So, but it is convenient you could carry it, the, the pitcher to the sink for, to fill it. And we're gonna run a test soon and you'll see how it goes. I place some water in it first. That'll make it easier for this for the um, salt to dissolve. Now the scoop it does come with a scoop. The scoop that it comes with is 30 grams. That's a little bit larger than a tablespoon. It's a one and a half tablespoons. A tablespoon is 20 grams. This has 30 grams in it. Um, I mean, it holds 30 grams. And we're going to run the the cycle with 30 grams of salt. So we're going to add the salt. You may get a little. This actually seems to be slightly under 30 grams. I'm using pickling salt, which is another form of non-iodized salt. You could also use kosher salt. Any salt that does not that's non-iodized. And then we're gonna, I'm going to add some vinegar. Um, now for this, I'm just playing it by air. But for the vinegar, I'm going to add a little less than half of a scoop. It shouldn't really need more than that. And the purpose of adding the vinegar is to stabilize the pH and put it in the right range, the proper range, to um, create hypochlorous acid, as opposed to hypochlorite. I added some water to the to the pitcher, and I'm going to mix it around. Now the idea is just to stir up until the salt is dissolved. Now, one thing you're going to notice is going to be a nice little light show when this goes on. In theory, this pitcher could also be used to make hydrogen infused water. The reason why I don't suggest it and we don't market it as that is because it does not have an SPEP on membrane. If you want to use it for hydrogen water for drinking, there would be ozone in the water because it does not have the SPEPM membranes that filter that out. So you'll see there's different settings over here. Now these settings, I'm not sure why the camera's not picking it up because it's extremely clear over here, but the settings reflect different times. There's the power button. That's nine minutes. And then you press power to switch to a different mode. You have to stretch, you have to press the power button in between. That's 12 minutes, three minutes, in seven minutes. I'm going to run this on a 12 minute cycle and then we're going to run a test afterwards to check the strength. The cycle is almost complete. There's about a minute left. Now one thing to keep in mind, we ran this for 12 minutes. Uh, using 30 grams of salt, you could adjust it. The longer you run it, you can run it for two cycles in a row if you want, or you can run it for a 12 minute cycle and then a three minute or a seven minute. Uh, the longer that it runs, the more, stronger it's gonna be. The more salt that you add, the stronger it's gonna be. Now you could experiment, that's the beauty of of the machine. You could get your own pH, um, pH meter and then chlorine meter. And you could experiment using less salt and longer time cycles if you want, or more salt and less time cycles. Uh, generally, if it's something you're going to be using regularly, we suggest to go with the longer cycles and use less salt. That way, you won't have an issue with salt residue. Um, once this is done, we're going to give it a test, and then we'll show you the results. And that beep is just showing us that the cycle has been completed. I'm going to dip in a chlorine test strip 
And then this has a rubber gasket around it. So it's nice that you don't have to worry about leakage, but sometimes it sticks a little bit. Seal it in. I'm gonna put the test strip in there and then we're gonna show the results. Now just to give a better view, I'm sticking it right in front of the camera. You see the results there. Um, it looks to be about 400. Maybe in between 200 and 400. But that's a very strong result. It, it, if you noticed while it was running, it had a lot of bubbling action going on. This machine has a very large electrode. For, so for 12 minutes, that's, that's pretty good results. Now you can find this machine, it's available, it's going to be available for sale, it's straight off the press, or actually straight off the assembly line, so we don't have it up on our website yet, but it will be up within the next day or two at libertysprayers.com, that's libertysprayers, with an S, uh, dot com. Now there's one thing to add, here is a, our pH meter, and I'm going to run the test. So it's showing the pH at around six. Now that's the level that most commercially pre-made hypochlorous acid um, comes at. And to be and if you look at our website, you'll see in the blogs, there's actually a slight mixture of sodium hypochlorite at that pH. For pure hypochlorous acid, you want it to be at 5.5. Now you can always add vinegar to the mix. Uh, the vinegar lowers the pH, so you could also, if you get a pH meter, you could adjust the level of the pH accordingly um, by adding more or less vinegar. Now that there's not, that's really going to depend on the tap water and the pH that you're starting with. Tap water in the U.S. ranges anywhere from 5, a pH of 5 to a pH of 8. Um, so that's, for, if you want to adjust that properly, you'd want to get your own meter and... Uh, and that way you could add more or less vinegar depending on what you need. The other thing to note is that if you're going to be using it after, right away, then you don't have to worry about it. You can just pour it into whatever device you're going to be using it with. Um, if you're going to be waiting, uh, going to be using it in the future, let's say in a week or two, or even possibly longer than that, then what you want to do is you want to pour it um, into an airtight container we use, um, for our test reasons, we use a, a, um, a chlorine bleach bottle that we cleaned out. And you want it to be opaque. You don't want it to be see-through because sunlight can damage it. You want to keep it out of excessive heat. But as soon as you make it poured into an airtight container that seals and it can last you for a significant amount of time. If you want to know more about that, you can check out the blogs on our website at libertysprayers.com. Thanks for watching.